making the transition from Affinity Designer on the desktop to Affinity Designer on iPad can pose some challenges, especially if you don't have a keyboard on your iPad. In this video, I'm going to share with you my top five difficulties that I had and what I did to overcome them. So here we have a new document open in Affinity Designer 2. And if you're completely new to Affinity on the iPad, the first thing you're going to notice probably is that you can pinch zoom the document, but you're not going to be able to rotate it. So the first thing we're going to do is enable rotate. So we're going to just go back to the home screen in this top left corner, uh, come down to settings and then over to tools and then over to allow canvas rotation in all tools and then just click on done reopen document and you'll now be able to rotate to your heart's content next up you're going to need to learn a few basic finger gestures to help you get around in affinity especially if you don't have a keyboard so let me draw something with the pencil tool so i can show you how to delete something that's just a two finger tap and if you need to redo something, it's a three finger tap. Now, if you want to duplicate that object, you're first going to need to select the move tool, which is the black arrow at the top, or you can double tap the Apple pencil. Next, you'll need the command controller down here. Just tap on that and then it's the right hand symbol there. Now, every time that you tap on the selected object, you're going to duplicate it. And then obviously to delete that, you can just two finger tap again. And to come out of that mode, just tap on the command controller again. Those gestures should be enough to get you started. But if you do need more information, there is a really great sheet on Affinity's own website, which I'll leave a link in the description to, uh, which goes through some more specific and detailed gestures you can use. So next up is the importance of layer management on these affinity projects. I'm just going to open the previous one I did, which was my first real go with a pen tool. And if I just open the layers studio, you'll see I have a ton of layers all just loose in one big list, which means if I want to change the outlines or any of details, I've got to do them all individually or group all these into a um, separate folder to do globally. Uh, if I just go hop over to another project I've done, where I started from scratch with the groups of the folders. So here I've got outline, for example. What I've done there is put outline and 15 pixels. So just a reminder to myself what line weight I used. You can always find out by just tapping on, on the line. It will show up in the uh, on the stroke there. But I like to just be organized and put it in, in individual groups and just have a reminder. So main details, for example, um, if I just expand that, you can see, again, there's a ton of layers in there. I'm going to collapse it again. If I just tap on the group, I can now, with just a few clicks, change the line weight of all of them, which means at the end of the drawing, if I'm not quite happy with how it looks, I can play around with those three main groups and get it looking just how I want. It's just a much more organized more efficient way, especially at the end uh, of getting the drawing looking exactly how you want. So how do we go about creating layers and groups and renaming them? I've created a new document here, so let's just open that and we'll go into the Layers Studio and you'll see there's nothing there because there's no objects created. And what we're going to do is hit this button here next to the trash can to open a menu. At the minute, group is not shown because there's no objects. So let's just close that down and that one and just create something. And there we go. That's created a layer called curve. And what we want to do is now hit that same button again and create group. And reopen the layers studio. And that's now turned to group. So we're going to rename that by hitting on the, uh, the three dot button and that brings up this panel where it says group just tap on that and it says enter the new name of the layer so we'll call this outline and 
okay that and go back to the layer studio that way and now our curve has become outline and then we can add another object reopen the the panel and we want to move our new curve so that's this one is the group the outline and that's the curve we're just going to long press on that and drop it down into the outline then we can close that so outline is the group and then we can expand it and see the objects contained within and if you stick to that kind of format you should have a nice organized illustration at the end so i tend to work just on um, on the outline work on one part of the drawing at a time and just keep coming back into the studio make sure that i'm selected on outline you can see there it's it's grouped all that together and um, then you can just, if it doesn't add anything manually, it's automatically you can manually just move it over. And that just keeps everything neat instead of having one long list of everything all lumped in together.